Now it is my honor to introduce His Excellency Jan Eliasson, Deputy Secretary General Des Designate of the United Nations. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador, Excellencies, family of Raoul Wallenberg, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very honored to speak briefly at this occasion. I'm very glad that the passers-by this beautiful walk, uh, probably in better weather than today, will be reminded of uh, Raoul Wallenberg and what he stands for. When I look back at my many years in diplomacy, I, I can uh, see three faces, three perspectives of Raoul Wallenberg and the work on his fate. The first one was the period of bringing him back alive. There, the efforts failed, of course, mainly due to the character of the regime at the time in the Soviet Union, but also, I must admit, due to uh, mistakes and passivity also from our own side. The second phase was to find out what really happened, the fate, the truth about Raoul Wallenberg. There we ran into a wall also for many years. Uh, although things improved with uh, the fall of the Soviet Union and the arrival of uh, the new Russian leadership, we uh, had a pretty good cooperation during those years when we tried to search for the full truth. I still believe there are things to find out from Russia, but also from other sources, that we should never fail in finding the full truth. The third perspective on Wallenberg is what you are doing exactly here now at this moment. That is, when we cannot give, have him back to his family, to his sister, to his parents at the time, then at least we should honor him by remembering him and seeing him as the role model he was, as a source of great inspiration. That's the best tribute we can give to Raoul Wallenberg. And this, this is needed so much in today's world. We have seen genocides after the unspeakable Holocaust. We have seen it in Cambodia. We've seen it in Rwanda. We have seen it in Srebrenica. We've seen it in the Kurdish areas of Iraq. I have seen it. And these things still continue to haunt us. We have minorities persecuted all over the world. I see the Minister of Democracy here, who is champion on human rights. There is so much to be done on this area. We, we cannot fail. We must not fail. We must not tire to stand up for the basic dignity of man and human rights. And here, of course, Raoul's example comes back to us and serves as a true inspiration. For me, he was a, a person who worked extremely unconventionally. He was very innovative to the degree that, well, he didn't quite follow the instructions. And sometimes one shouldn't ask for instructions when you save lives. Maybe I shouldn't say that as a former civil servant in the Swedish government. But he, he was doing it with an absolute unfailing moral compass. He did not have a decision-making process facing evil. And that, I think, we should remember when we face these situations today, both in our daily lives and in this country and in Europe and all over the world. We have issues in our own continent where we divide humanity into us and them according to ethnic or religious lines. And the us is always finer and better than the them. So this is a day to remember that we should bring, get energy and, and inspiration and courage from Raoul Wallenberg's example. He was a man, and some of you will recognize this, he, man who was a man of passion, and he was a man of compassion. Remember, without passion, nothing happens in life. But without compassion, the wrong things happen. And Raoul Wallenberg was the ideal representative of both passion and compassion. Thank you very much.